an educational video. Oh. 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 What's going on, everyone? Jaronism. Hey, Jaronism. You're a slimy fuck. Here with a video today that I hope you take the time and sit and ponder on it and really try and digest the information that I present so that you can take some of these very important proofs and arrive at a very important, if not essential, conclusion regarding who we are, where we live, and why that's truly important. Now I hope that you actually give me genuine proofs that I can go look up myself and test myself or give me reliable sources that I can go and take a look at so that you know there's no confusion and you're gonna make this crystal clear. But first, I'm gonna be late for a eulogy, so give me one second. Dear ye beloved, friends and family here of the sphere. Okay, I'm gonna skip your stupid little skit here. I admit it. That funeral is kind of a premonition. But in this video, I will be giving some proofs that are extremely damning to the doctrine of the sphere. Yes, you heard that right. The doctrine of the sphere. I didn't make that up. I'm pretty sure you made that up. Very close, Bill. We are actually going to discuss us, humans. Wait, I thought we were going to discuss a globe Earth and how it's not true. Are you changing the topics three minutes into your video? Why? Using the age-old big six questions. The who, the what, where, the when, the why, the how. My goodness, are you going to do this old goddamn video where you say you're going to do something, but it's going to take you like 20 minutes to actually get to your point? Skip. So how are we here? You know I always say to you guys to not trust men. And so that includes me. So what I'm trying to do is basically lay things out neatly and easily so that I hope you can come to an easier conclusion. So to me, there are three possibilities that can explain the how when discussing how we got here. Wait, what does this have to do with flat earth proofs? You know what? I'm just going to skip it. Number one is accidental. The Big Bang Theory. There was no intelligent thought. This includes Darwinian evolution. Evolution has nothing to do with the shape of the earth. Skip. Number two could have been a multiverse. Could be an infinite possibility, infinite universe, parallel universe situation that's very complex and very deep. What I want to point out, it, it pre obviously, well, it, the answer is yes and no. <laughs> because, because... Oh, the answer is yeah. A multiverse has nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. Skip. So, the first one being accidental, which would include the Big Bang Theory, which would include evolution, for the most part, the current scientific establishment's belief in the fact that there cannot possibly be a god, and so it must be accidental. No. Science makes no claim about whether there can or cannot be a god. It never has, and it probably never could. At best, science can evaluate the claims that theists make. So when the Catholic Church says that a communion wafer turns into a human body, we can actually test to see if that happens. When a theist says that there was a flood 4,000 years ago, we can actually test to see if that happened. When someone says they were instantly healed of cancer because of prayer, we can check if that happens. What science cannot do is test God because God is so ill-defined. God has such ill-defined powers where he can be anything from an omni-powerful, omni-relevant, omnipresent being to just the first thing that caused the universe to be. With that kind of definition of God, it's impossible to test God itself. So don't you go sticking things into science's mouth. Talked about this. You were going to be honest. 
Now, I don't know how many of you believe that, but if you look at the percentages, only 38% of Americans believe in evolution, which is strange since it's taught in schools as a fact. Shouldn't that number be a lot higher than 38%? Or is there something inside every single person telling them something isn't right about the current theory? Okay, this is lovely. I'm glad that you are doing this little background on evolution and the Big Bang Theory and geology, I guess. But if I remember the title of the video, we were going to talk about the globe, or globe Earth. You were going to give me proofs that the Earth is not a globe. And we're 10 minutes in, and you have done a stupid skit and have, you know, explained the different kinds of models that there are for the universe. None of which have talked about the globe Earth yet. So, skip. From my, what I've heard and what I understand about science, if the theory of evolution fails a challenge, then it proves that theory false. Have you ever noticed that the theory of evolution is a theory? It is not a law. It will never be a law. Oh my goodness, evolution? Now we're going to talk about evolution? You need to get your shit together. Concise. Be concise. You have a title on your video, your video should relate to that. If you choose to use logic and solid science, you will get shown that you are wrong when it comes to the things that are not changeable by their rules and regulations. They will not let you dispute evolution. You are allowed to dispute evolution. Nobody's ever... I want you to point to me someone who has been stopped from disputing evolution. And I mean legitimately stopped, like, hey, here's a YouTube channel all about disputing evolution, and their channel got shut down. Hey, look, here is somebody who is writing in a popular science magazine about anti-evolution stuff, and their whole... The whole career goes ruined and destroyed because they were not doing the status quo or whatever. Show me these things. And I want real ones. I don't want none of this expelled bullshit. I want real ones. And I get the feeling that you're not going to find them. What you want is that you want people to question evolution. And then you want the scientists to take these attacks on evolution 100% seriously. And rewrite the all of the everything because some dude on YouTube questioned evolution. Bitch. That ain't how it works. You want to question evolution the right way, you go through the right channels. Go write yourself a scientific paper. Try to get it through the peer review system with some science and some numbers and some statistics. And you might actually get yourself, you know, published. But if instead you want to make a YouTube video bitching about evolution and then expect the entirety of the country's education system to change because you made a YouTube video, then you full of shit. You crazy. That ain't how it works. Science is a matter of controversies and cover-ups regarding basic truths that the, that the scientific leaders, the powerful forces, they suppress. They suppress anything that would be inconvenient to their dogma. And that's just the truth. And if you think that you can bring me Wikipedia articles and send me links to books that have been written by scientists and others who have been indoctrinated by the system, please understand what I'm telling you, is I don't want to hear anything from anyone who has been indoctrinated by the system I'm telling you is corrupt. Well, isn't that fucking convenient? I don't want to hear anything from scientists about science stuff. God damn. I mean, I don't know how more fucking close-minded you could meet. Did, didn't you say something about opening your mind? Because there's truth inside or some bullshit? How about you live by your fucking words? You cannot bring me Wikipedia articles because the people that think they're the intellectuals writing the Wikipedia and correcting the Wikipedia and asking for citations are those who have been indoctrinated into a system believing they are intellectuals about things of which they have no proof. Oh my goodness, you're still talking about fucking con conspiracies to hide all the truth from you? Jesus, fuck, we're 17 minutes into your video and I've yet to hear anything about a proof for a flat earth. 17 minutes. 
You are not concise at all. If life can't come from non-life in a testable situation, an observable incident... Skip. And all you have to do is look at some of these hoaxes that have gone on in history. The Skip. Up next, we've got the very scientific theory of the multiverse. Skip. They state that space is so big... Skip. All of this, while science walks around with t-shirts that say, Science doesn't care about your beliefs. Skip. Now, if you all walked into this classroom, and I was teaching, and I told you that the word God appeared on the chalkboard as a result of me throwing the piece of chalk at the chalkboard, Skip. and life coming from non-life, which means from nothing, came planets, came stars, came suns, came Earth. Skip. If science seems like they are conforming more to the scientific definition or to the pseudoscience definition. Skip. Lucky for you, I believe that the Earth is flat. So, let me tell you why I believe that and the evidence I have in support. Flat Earth mentioned for the first time at 31 minutes, 32 seconds out of a video that's 48 minutes long. Now, follow along here. I try to draw this crude example here. As you see, here's the Earth. And here's the sun. So we know that the back side of the earth would at this time be dark, according to the current beliefs. And you'll see that all around us are the stars. You'll see at the top I drew a little Big Dipper, as that is what extends off of the North Star. And I also colored the back of the earth black here, just to show. And from that side we can see all around us. Correct? We can see that the stars in the north rotate in a counterclockwise fashion. The stars in the south rotate in a clockwise fashion. Now, I'm assuming everyone would be in, in agreement here at this point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the Earth through its yearly orbit of the Sun and show you where the current cosmology breaks down. When this Earth rotates to the other side, which would take six months, and now we're situated here, and now the dark part of the Earth is on the other side. Granted, we know that this is allowed because our days are not 24 hours, which would end up having our night and day be switched, but only 23 hours and 56 minutes, where on this other side, we still have the stars that rotate counterclockwise in the north and clockwise in the south. However, how can we see these stars over here now that the sun is blocking us? And how did we see these stars before when the sun was blocking us on the other side? If we were over here looking this way, there should have been a whole star or a whole sky we couldn't see. But we move to the other side of the sun. Well, looking at your crude ass drawing, do you think there's stars between us and the sun? Because you know that stars are the sizes of suns. And if there was a star between us and the sun, there'd be another sun. You're a dumbass. It took me forever and a half to piece together whatever the fuck he's talking about here. And I think I figured it out but I'm not 100% sure. Now, I'm gonna take the image here, and I'm gonna try to explain it the best I can. And I'm not trying to make a straw man out of his argument, but I legitimately do not understand what he's saying. Now, what I think he's saying, when the Earth is over here on the right hand of the screen, if someone, say, in on the equator, halfway across the globe, were to look up directly up in their direction, directly up, they would be looking outward towards a set of stars. Six months later, when the, the Earth is now on the left hand of the screen here, if once again the same person at the equator decided to look straight up, which would make him look to the left side of the screen, he would see a different set of stars. This is what I think he's saying. I, and again, I'm not trying to make a straw man out of him, but I, this drawing is entirely confusing. It confuses the shit out of me, so I'm trying to simplify it in a way that will be less confusing. 
and we still have the same view. Do you think perhaps the reason is we don't move? So here I'll give you another example. This is my, I'm sure you've heard me talk about it many times, my planetarium site. And you'll see that we are looking at this triangle constellation. We are in the south in Australia. Now keep an eye on this constellation here and also look that we are in the dark looking at this southern star and we're going to simply change our current location and see what happens. You can see that the stars rotate the way they're supposed to. And now we're going to just change our position. We're going to go from Australia instead and we're going to go to South, A South America. Now there it's daytime, right? Everyone would agree with that. Australia night, South America day. And here is the problem with current cosmology. The fuck? Stop. 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 Whatever it is you're doing, it's stupid. Why are you changing positions on the globe? You're talking about a change in time six months later, as you have said. So why are you changing your position on a globe? It makes no goddamn sense. Also, why, why are you looking to Celestial South? Celestial South always looks the same. Like, Glow Earth scientists tell you this, that the South, if you look southward at Celestial South, it'll always be there and look the same and rotate clockwise. The same thing is true with Celestial North. If you look at Celestial North, it'll always be there and it'll always turn counterclockwise. So you picked a very funny direction to look. I'm guessing that the reason you did that is to hide the fact that your test doesn't actually show what it's supposed to show. Now, I'll remind you again at what you're supposed to be trying to show us. What you're supposed to tr be trying to show us is that if you look straight up, six months later, there should be a whole set of new stars there than there were six months earlier. That is what you're supposed to be showing us. So not changing the time to six months later or six months earlier doesn't test your hypothesis and changing your position on the globe does nothing at all. So here is how you should run your experiment. Now, according to you, if we are on a globe and we are, say, on the equator and we look straight up, we should be looking at this set of constellations. Six months later, when we have switched positions on in the solar system, we should be over here. And when we look straight up at night, we should be looking over in this direction and see these constellations. So let's take our location. We'll go to the equator and we won't be looking south. We'll be looking straight up and we'll keep an eye on Pisces here. And we're going to change the time by six months. Six months from July will get us at January. So we're going to change this to January. Ready? One month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months. That is how you should run the experiment. And as you can see, we're not looking at the exact same stars again. Your experiment is bullshit. That's not even including the fact that you have such a simplified model of the solar system that who even knows if you're right. If you're going to run an experiment like this, you should at least run it with a good model, not some bullshit drawing you didn't paint. That is where you are wrong. I don't mind you testing globe Earth models. That's fine. But at least actually test what people say and use a model that people actually claim to be true. Don't just make one up. Guess what? That star system is simply behind the sun. Facepalm. You might have to pull a face palm here like they love to do to us. Oh, trust me, I face palmed pretty hard when you showed me this, you dumb fuck. Because it all makes sense now that all the stars are always above our heads. The sun comes across the sky, which makes it too bright for us to see them. And then it disappears at night. And then again, we see the stars. They tell us this is because of some sort of rotation. 
where if that were true, then the stars would not be above the heads of the people during the daytime. There would be a set of stars that we would not even know about. There should be some stars somewhere that we can't see because they're always behind the sun which doesn't move. And when the sun does move, which even they will tell you it does, it travels 500,000 miles per hour, you think it's going somewhere, wouldn't that reveal stars to people that were behind it? Of course not. Why? Because the earth is flat. The sun hides only the stars that we see at night, but it's during the day, so we don't have stars. Then comes the night, and we have stars. I find it really funny that you bring up this whole stars behind the sun thing, because it's something that we've actually run experiments on. On March 19th of 1919, in order to test relativity, astronomers took pictures of the eclipse to see what stars would appear near the sun, because there are supposed to be some stars that would be behind the sun. Now, because gravity is a thing, the light from the stars bent around the sun making them actually visible or visible at a much different angle than where they actually are. I'm going to set you some links for how this experiment works and how we've actually already tried this. So the next time that you say something about stars behind the sun, don't be a fucking idiot and look it up first. God, I feel like you just open your mouth to regurgitate bullshit. So you might need to go play with this software yourself so you can see what I'm saying, but I'll actually show you one more time. Okay, and I'll show you why I like this program so much. Uh, if you want to find it, it's at neve, N-E-A-V-E dot com slash planetarium. It's free. It's fun. It's educational. It's science. So let's play with it. Oh, are you going to show me again? Fuck. Uh, you'll see here that you can change the date, which is very cool. You can even go by the month or the day. You can go by the hour or the minute, and you can get a true representation of the day-night system by keeping this light over here on, or you can turn it off and get all nighttime view. But for now, we're going to keep it on real. Our location, we're going to go up to North America somewhere. We'll put it there. It's about, what, we'll move it to Colorado somewhere right about right there. Okay. Click Done, and we can see where we're looking here. We're looking into the north. Okay. And let's take a look at a easy star system like the, or constellation, such as the Big Dipper. You can see that right there. And we can see that the stars rotate counterclockwise as the minutes pass. So this shows you what tonight we'll be doing. Actually, this is July 31st, what July 31st will be doing. And there's that nice little rotation in the sky. So, we're told that we're on a spinning globe. And when in daytime comes, I am to believe that now I have turned into the sun, right, which does not move. And therefore, the stars that are always behind the sun, I would never be able to see. So if that is the case, then would this happen? We're going to change our location now. Now, this does drop behind here, but watch the Big Dipper for me. And you will see what happens. We're going to now just kind of take this and move right over to Russia. Do you see what's happening here? It's daytime in Russia when it's nighttime there. Now we sit in Russia. So, of course, you can't see these stars in Russia because it's daytime. The sun is right there, blocking all the stars' view. But by playing and understanding what's going on on the flat Earth, you will understand that that star and that constellation is simply black or whited out from the sun. Really? We can't see the stars because the sun's too bright? You're a fucking genius! And then you will notice that by simply moving back to the United States as we go here, that's why at night we see the stars and in Russia, they don't. Okay, stop changing your position. Change the goddamn time. 
if you're talking about differences in time, here's an idea. Change the goddamn time. It's frustrating because it makes me think that you are don't want to change the time because it won't show what you want it to show, like it did in your last experiment. Not because we're on two ends of the globe, which doesn't match the evidence, doesn't match what our reality shows, but because the sun is moving across the sky, blocking the stars for one half of the world, then it goes back to the other side and blocks the stars for the other half, back and forth, back and forth, and flat earth is stupid, and the globe is fact, even though it can't possibly happen with what we see in the sky. That, my friends, is called proof, and that, my friends, is called the death of the globe, the nail in the coffin, good night, Irene, the fat lady has sung, no, that is called a straw man. You had made an experiment on something that nobody says happens. And then you presented it as if that is what everyone says happens. Again, because I'm just trying to make this as clear as possible. Take a look at these images, see if they help you understand. That they tell us the stars are rotating above our heads in their circles because you're on a globe that is spinning. But they also say that you're taking a journey, an orbit around the sun, where in six months you'd be on the other side of the sun. Yet you still have the same stars above your head. But you're on a different side but it's the same stars on the other side. Or are you standing on a flat plane and the sun comes merrily along above your head, gets in the way of the stars for just a few hours, sometimes 12, sometimes 14, sometimes 10, and then goes about its merry way, doing its job perfectly as always, accidentally, thanks to Big Bang Cosmology. Please use an actual model that is promoted by heliocentrism so that you can demonstrate the difference between the model that is given by heliocentrics and reality. Unless you do that, you're being a dishonest fuck because you're just making up your random ass models of what you think heliocentrics are saying. Please stop being such a dishonest fuck. Occam's razor says when faced with a couple different possibilities, usually the easiest explanation is the truth. Nobody has a monopoly on what is a very hard problem, but I don't have much patience for anyone who denies that this challenge is real. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Did you just change subjects again? The fuck, dude? You need to make up your mind on what you want to talk about. So if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, guys. Don't believe me. Don't believe anybody. Trust your eyes. Trust your common sense. Trust the fact that if you believe in a globe, you have to believe in the 821 mile curvature between New York and California. Even though the tallest mountain on the way is Mount Whitney at a total of about three miles high. Somewhere else there's the 821 mile curvature. Do you not understand how circles work? You are comparing two figures that measure different things. Curvature does not equal elevation, you dumbass. Elevation is how high something is in comparison to sea level. Curvature is a degree to which a curve deviates from a straight line. They don't measure the same thing. I don't know why you're comparing two things that don't measure the same thing. My guess is because you're a dishonest fuck. So let me show you the difference. Here's our curved earth. Here's New York. Here's LA. Here's Mount Whitney. The yellow line is the elevation. The blue line is the curvature. Do you see how they measure different things? You're a Dumbass. And you know what? I'm done with your bullshit. I have watched 48 goddamn minutes of your stupid ass video for four minutes of 
actual proofs. And all of them have been slimy sleight of hand in your part, where you compare two things that aren't actually comparable, where you use stupid tests that don't actually test what you're saying. You are a slimy fuck for that. Now, I want you to understand something here, Jaredism. I don't call you a slimy fuck because you believe in something that I don't. I don't call you a slimy fuck because we have a difference of opinion. I call you a slimy fuck because you're dishonest. Because when you say that you're going to present proof, you do it in the most deceitful way possible. When you present models of a glow earth, you use a straw man model of the glow earth, not an actual model of a glow earth. When you show your stupid experiments, you don't actually experiment on the variables that you're supposed to be experimenting on. All you do is sleight of hand and slimy rhetoric to make sure that your audience buys into the bullshit that you are peddling. Now, if ever you decide to actually have genuine proof for your flat earth, and I mean actual proof, not your let's look at the southern fucking celestial south and see how it doesn't move when nobody says it's supposed to, then make a video, call it proofs, and actually talk about that shit instead of wasting 48 minutes of my goddamn time.